Welcome, Madam Secretary. It's uh, wonderful to have you back before the committee. And thank you for the thoughtfulness of your budget proposal, both in its fiscal responsibility and its um, uh, diplomatic priorities. So I thank you for that and thank and acknowledge uh, all of the men and women who serve under your leadership at the State Department. You have helped uh, really to restore America's position in the world, as, as our ranking member said, as a partner for peace and democracy. And we are all grateful and thank you for your service. Um, and we've had a lot of discussions today about um, uh, various uh, parts of the world that are of great concern and particularly unsettled and uh, areas of great violence. And I'd like to really focus my inquiry on two areas really closer to home. Uh, and the first is, and, I, and I'll just articulate the questions and give you the balance of my time. The first is really um, about the sort of events in the Middle East in general, uh, in Syria, in Iran, and in that region of the world, and its impact on our gas prices here in the United States. And I know that we, you know, in my home state, we've seen a tremendous increase in gas prices and uh, almost 40 cents from a year ago today. And I'm wondering if you can speak to your, pers you know, your perspective on how a, a variety of international events that you're closely monitoring might have an impact on fuel prices in the near term, and also what we're doing uh, both diplomatically and in terms of development efforts in the long term to ensure that gas prices are stabilized uh, or that at least in the long term they're mitigated. Because I think, you know, we hear a lot about how this unrest is contributing to a rise in gas prices, and uh, some of us also know that a big part of it is speculation and gouging, and we're going to take up some legislation, hopefully, to address that. But uh, I think uh, I events around the world are certainly impacting, and I'd love to hear your perspective on that. And the second issue I I'd ask you to speak to is something I hear a lot about back at home. Uh, as you know, Rhode Island is a huge manufacturing state, and we're really engaged in this whole Make It in America agenda to rebuild and reintegrate American manufacturing. And one of the challenges we face, and I hear from uh, Rhode Island manufacturers is about you know our, our, the Chinese and their behavior as trading partners and uh, their manipulation of currency and their uh, refusal to protect intellectual property and uh, the challenges of their policies of indigenous innovation and technology transfers. And so I'm just uh, I'd like to hear you speak to some of the State Department's efforts diplomatically to really help even the playing field so that we can really rebuild American manufacturing in our country. And again, uh, thank you. And uh, I will finally will associate myself with Congressman Cardozo's remarks uh, on the Azores and um, on the importance of both of those issues. And I'll submit for a written, a written question relating to uh, the Turkish, uh, our efforts to ensure that the, uh, the Turks uh, respect the Christians and are respecting the churches and religious uh, freedom in that country, which I'll follow up with. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Congressman. Um, with respect to gas prices, uh, I, I think uh, there is room for uh, considering ways to rein in speculation and gouging. Uh, yes, are there events that are happening in the world that uh, raise questions? Yes. But to the extent uh, that it uh, justifies or can explain the increase in the gas prices, I don't believe so. Um, so therefore, uh, I, I have long thought that uh, there has to be some market mechanism that can be explored uh, to try to break speculation uh, that is unrelated. Now, if, you know, if the Iranians close the Strait of Hormuz, you know, that would be a real event, and we'd have to deal with it, and we've said we would deal with it, but that would cause the market to obviously react. But right now, there's talk in the air about all kinds of things, but uh, there is no event. Uh, so I do think it's worth exploring uh, the legislation that uh, you referenced. Um, with respect to uh, manufacturing, uh, this administration has brought more trade actions against China, against unfair trade practices, against uh, uh, the theft of intellectual property, uh, against the uh, use of indigenous innovation. Uh, and we will continue to do so because we don't fear a level playing field. I have great confidence in you know, the, the workers and, and businesses of Rhode Island to be competitive with anybody. Uh, but if a big thumb is on the scale, whether it's currency manipulation or indigenous in, innovation or uh, the, the unfortunate uh, theft of intellectual property, uh, that makes competition uh, one-sided. And so uh, this administration has taken uh, a very aggressive approach on the defensive side. On the offensive side, I just hosted a big conference at the State Department where we had all the American chambers from around the world, 
uh, come in to talk about how we could do a better job helping American businesses, how we could you know, really knock down those barriers, cut through that red tape. And so we want to be uh, deeply involved with our 1,000 economic officers around the world in helping to open markets and create jobs here at home. We consider that uh, part of what we call uh, economic statecraft, and uh, I am very committed to it.